So you've got yourself an EV and now you need to charge it. Well, the good news is most of the new cars out there, including the Toyota BZ4, comes with a 110 to this adapter. And this is the most common one you'll find in North America. And this is a J1772 and it's quite standard. Um, the big thing is with an EV, like this model, for example, it will take you 20 plus hours. Uh, you know, you, you're looking at a whole day's worth of charging at a very slow rate. The alternative to this is to go to a level two charger. Level two charger, which looks like this, uh, is the one in my garage, for example. And that will charge um, much faster because it's using 220. And we're talking about 30 amperes as opposed to one of these where you are limited. So the way the chargers work, again, these are the ones that you have accessible uh, at home. So you just go to basically this little door here. And what you will find is there are two different connectors in here, two plugs. So the top one is your J1772. And all you need to do is plug the other end into the wall socket in this case, and plug this in. And then if this end were plugged in, you would actually see a green indicator here. In this case, it's not plugged in. Now, if you go to a DC charger, which is the other alternative, now you're most likely, uh, for most of us, will not have a DC charger at home. Um, so you were talking about roadside charging. And in that case, you're using the second bottom part here, which has two prongs on the bottom. And that will allow you to go at a much faster rate. So in theory, on paper, you're driving and at some point you need to charge up quickly, you would go to the fastest uh, charger you can find. So in the case of the front wheel drive here for BZ4X, it's uh, rated at 150 maximum. And if, you're, if you've got the all wheel drive, it's 100 uh, kilowatt. So that would be limited to that. Now, again, this is ideal, ideal temperatures, ideal conditions. Um, the engine or the, you know, the entire system is not too hot or too cold, so it will vary and rest, um, be mindful that if it's extremely cold or it's extremely hot, uh, the battery itself will have to uh, get itself into an optimum condition before it can charge at a faster rate. So if you're planning on, on a trip, for example, and you think that you can go ahead and just plug it in, it's gonna take half an hour, uh, you'll be sadly uh, disappointed to find that it will take probably more like an hour, an hour and a half in most cases. Again, it all varies, it depends on the temperature and a whole lot of factors, but just keep in mind that it's not always or most of the time ideal. So there is that. So again, so when you get one of these, you get, basically the 110 uh, wire with most of the cars. Get yourself, in my opinion, get yourself a level two um, charger at home and plug that right into the 220. So as you can see by the one that I've got, you have the connector that looks very much like the connector for a dryer, for example. And so you get an electrician to put that in. And in some places, like I know here in Canada or especially in Quebec where you can get um, a subsidy basically so they will pay for the installation or in some cases they pay for the actual charger itself so that's pretty much it you plug it in once it's finished it finishes the other thing that you can do is on the car itself you can set it so if you for example wanted to go up to 80 percent of the battery capacity you could tell the car hey i only want to charge up to this amount it will respect that now why would you want to do this well, in some cases, and it depends on the car again, it is preferable to keep the battery between 20 and 80%, for example, and you may not want to charge it at 100% all the time. Now, what happens with some companies, such as Toyota, is they actually will have a buffer, meaning that they'll have a buffer on the low end and they'll have a buffer on the high end, so it will never allow you to overcharge in theory. And so it will also not let you deplete completely the battery so that this way your battery will have a longer life and will be much better overall for longevity's point of view. If you have a level two charger in the home, uh, for example, I've got the EV duty, uh, right on the phone, I can select how much amperage I want. So I tend to charge this, for example, at 12 amperes as opposed to 30. It takes longer. It all depends on how much time you have, obviously. If you're home for a quick charge and you're 
you, you're getting changed, taking a shower, and you only have so much time you have to go back out, you might want to put it to full uh, power, full output, and at that point get the fastest charge that you can. So that occasionally happens. Most of the time, since I know it's going to be sitting in the garage overnight, I, I time it. So basically, it will go ahead and consume less power. It is better to slow charge. The other thing, of course, uh, being mindful of the power grids these days, you can also, depend, you know, through your charger, through the car, you can also set timers. So you could say, you know, I get a lower rate, for example, at 1 a.m. if you're in California or places like that, you might decide that, you know, middle of the night is the best time to charge the vehicle. You could also program that. So there's a whole bunch of things in there that you can adjust and, you know, both help the environment, that additional step, and of course, keep your costs down. So overall, I think this is going to be a great time for EVs. Make sure that you understand the range limitations of EVs when you purchase one and that you are mindful if you're in cold climate or very hot climate as to how that affects EVs. So I hope this was helpful. Give us a thumbs up and of course, please subscribe. That really helps us out. Leave some comments below. We'd love that. I'm Bob Pelley and CTO Bob. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.